88 Gatorade car. Yeah, I drove the 88, that was my very first one. And then that was 84, then 85, I stayed with the same team and we had a different sponsor then, but yeah. How did that drive? <laughs> Absolutely terrible. <laughs> he, he can say that now. I got really lucky. I got in the cup uh, by an accident. I got a phone call. I was running the American Speed Association, the short car, and I was doing a lot of winning. And I got a phone call from a guy named Chris Stewart who owned that Gatorade car. And he said, hey, my son says that you're winning all the short tracks. We got the last race of the year coming up, Atlanta 500. And we want to know if you want to come down and run the car. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But I had a major commitment to run the Snowball Derby in Pensacola, Florida. And there was no way I was going to go get out of that race. Plus, I could win that race. 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 I didn't win it. So I turned it down, but I told them I really want to drive for it. So they put Donnie Allison in the car. Donnie goes to the Atlanta 500, blows the engine up 20 laps into the race. And he said, he told me, he said, I have never drove a car in my life that handled that bad. He said, that was the worst handling car I ever drove. I said, so that's, so I was going to get in that car. It was going to handle terrible. I was going to look stupid. It was going to blow up. And I was not going to get the ride. I wasn't going to be able to run. So instead, I passed on it. The guy hired me, and I won the rookie of the year the following year in 84, and then kept going, and I made it in cup. Oh, but if I would have took that ride in 1983, I might not have made it to come. Yeah, because wow. I, I would have performed terrible. I know I would have, you know, from what Donnie ended up telling me. Most of that started was that front end. When they started making that front end lay right on the ground to get maximum downforce, they all learned that there was a ton of speed there now. So it's hard to unlearn what you've learned. <laughs> and so if they took and raised that front end back up and put that plastic piece back in the front like we used to have, yeah. I think the racing would be better, but that would be like going back in time to make the racing better. And they're, they're all about wanting to keep up with technology and everything, but when that front end lays on the ground, if that baby lifts up almost a half an inch on the track, it makes the handling go crazy. Uh, we used to have one template that went down the center. Yeah. To measure the shape of the body. There'd be one here, there'd be one there. Let's see, there'd be one, two, three, four, five. 
and then one down the center, six. That's basically all the templates we had. I think it was one on each side of the door. And they'd hold them up there, and if it didn't fit that shape, they'd make you beat that quarter panel out to make it fit that shape, <laughs> even if it was just in that one spot. They yeah. would do that. Now everything's measured with a laser. If it's like 20 thousandths of an inch off, they make you go back around. It's it's really a tough deal right now. It's smoke. seeing all the families that show up and stuff like Fred, Fred Lorenzen's daughter was sitting at my table and it was amazing talking to her last time you know but yeah this is and this is the uh, this is what each Hall of Famer gets mine's the second one right there uh, I got put in the Hall of Fame at 13 wow. so congratulations and listen to, uh, listen to all the story
seat. Well, they had what they called a butler seat. It wasn't like that one. My mine had um, the sides that would hold me in. Like mine came around here. Yeah. Nowadays, they're mostly running these style seats. They're all most of them are running carbon fiber seats. Uh, not all of them run it, but Kyle Bush doesn't run a car. He runs a seat like this. How bad were the seats when you started? Was it the old, it was just the old street seat on the up and all that? When I first started, I just ran fiberglass seats. Yeah. Little fiberglass seats that are bolted into like a metal frame with a, a, a snap-on cover. And then I never did run a, a seat like this, like Earnhardt might have run, where he had an old pickup truck seat with a metal piece that went yeah. around the side that he used to lean on. I know it was in that yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was it. I never could, I never felt real comfortable driving off my shoulders, meaning that your shoulders lay against you, and that controlled your whole body. My stuff would wrap around right here, and I had a lot of give and move in my body. I never did sit like this and drive. I moved a lot, which is not the safest thing to do. <laughs> They would get in there and work so hard to make that thing slide up before anybody caught what was going on. They started dynoing these on the engine dynamometers and they found out if they could take that floor, those holes and make it go all the way up, the engine would make much more horsepower because it would get more aligned. So uh, Bobby, no, it was uh, Jimmy Spencer had his Junior Johnson car Junior owned the car back then, I think it was, with, uh, who was the crew chief? I'm trying to think, Travis Carter, I think was a crew chief back then. Anyway, they had that little center plate machined so perfect that when vacuum would hit it, it would fly up, and then it would fall back down, and the naked eye could not see the seam around how it fell back down in there. And so finally, one day, they caught him. He won the Firecracker 400 Daytona and really flew that day. Just really beat everybody bad. They're like, what is going on? So they declared him legal and everything was going on. And finally, one of the crew guys ratted him out. And they found out about it. And so the NASCAR started inspecting those things and found it moving. And if you look at the manifold on the left, you'll see a weld mark. So what they did, they went and took a heli arc, a welding machine, and he welded them. They made him spot weld that so that thing could move just in case it was one of those deals. So we went through all this manifold work. That's a trick we never did do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we may have done other tricks, but not that. Yeah, didn't do that one, yeah. <laughs> back and knock him across the racetrack sideways that night. Yeah. I got nine of these, seven of those. <laughs> I got All right. of each other trying to anticipate when we're going to do the start. So this time I'm sitting there, I looked I looked over at, at Gordon, I looked over at him and he looked back at me and when he looked back I'm mad at the throttle. And I took off, I took off and he freaked out and tore second gear out of it right there. He just he grabbed the ship and broke second gear. My brother Kenny 
this mat right on, on the rear of me, took off, we went around, run two laps, and I won the race. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man, we got in a big old argument. Gordon said, he jumped the restart, he jumped the start. I got no idea. I'll look you right now. I know what you did. <laughs>